Um, in this video, we're going to look at how you revise for application. So application, firstly, what is it? Um, essentially, it is writing in context. And what we mean by that is, does your answer contain specific information and references to the product that is being mentioned in the case study or any product, for instance, or service, if that is more relevant? Are you talking about a particular industry? Um, if you let me make this very clear, if you get figures in a case study, you must must use them in your answers okay, to support what you're saying. So are you using the figures in the case study or any other figures that you know in the 25 marker, are you using figures that you know um, in terms of market share that supermarkets have, for instance, or whatever it may be? Is what you are saying relevant to the context that you are writing for? OK, now the way that we do this, like I said, is going to be different for 16 markers that are based on the case study and 25 markers that are not. So firstly, let's talk about case study questions. How do you use application in case study questions? You should be using phrases like the numbers in the case study show so that you know you are constantly referring to the numbers in the case study, okay? And that you are pulling from those and you're setting your answer in context. So what you're not doing is recommending that a business that is massively in debt uh, start spending loads of money on research and development. That doesn't make any sense. They don't have the money to do that. Or if you are suggesting that, then you're giving a really clear idea of where they would get that money from. That is writing in context. Another example of context is for this business in particular this would be more relevant um, and what I mean by for this business in particular is you're saying for this business that is new to the market so you're acknowledging that it's new to the market or this business that is well established or this business that is losing market share or this business that is gaining market share and what you recommend to these businesses will be very different. If a business is losing, sorry, if a business is losing market share, what you recommend to them will be very different to one that is already gaining it. One that is losing market share, if it's a problem around branding, you will expect them to spend money on advertising and branding and social media campaigning or signing up a celebrity or whatever it may be. If a business already has growing market share and is doing really well, you might tell them to focus on refining their products so that their customers are really satisfied and that they don't have to keep spending lots of money on promotion because their product speaks for the, itself, okay? So you have to make sure that your answers are relevant to the kind of business, whether it's small, whether it's big, whether it's growing in popularity, whether it's declining in popularity, whether it is um, got an established brand, whether it hasn't got an established brand, all of these things are context. The easiest way for you to revise for context with case studies is by reading over your previous essays. And one thing that you can do is you can read over your previous essay that is based on a case study. And hopefully at this point, uh, you may have forgotten what that case study was about and see if you can get a really clear idea about what that case study was about based on your answer. So the mark of a really good essay that is set in context is that I can read the answer and I don't have to read the case study because everything that it's drawing from the case study is really relevant and really apparent and it's referencing it. So I don't need to read the case study to know what's happening in the business. Everything is included in your answer. That doesn't mean, let me highlight this, that you just copy over lots of information, but you're using that information to construct your answer. Like I said, you're using information about market share. So if they've given you figures about market share, you can say over the past three years, we can see that this business is declining in market share. Therefore, I recommend. And then I don't need to read the case study. OK, let's now talk about how you revise for a essay where you're not going to have a case study. OK, um, essentially, you should be collecting your information about businesses for this one throughout the two years. So you should be looking at BBC News and you don't have to read, you know, loads and loads of news articles. You just have to read headlines. OK, and that will give you a pretty good idea. So the first paragraph will usually summarize the entire article. So just read that. 
um, re uh, read business review magazine. It's a brilliant magazine. It's written by your examiners. So that's really good. Uh, and read blogs on things like Tutor to You. I often do videos based on certain businesses. So I've done some on Apple. I've done some on Airbnb, for instance. You can look back at those videos and get an idea of what's happening in that business so that you can use it. Now, in terms of how to revise specifically is I would get the scheme of work from the exam the examining board's website and download the scheme of work. And what you'll notice is all the topics are listed in bullet points. OK, and then you need to pick about six or seven businesses from different industries. Don't forget to combine businesses that provide a product and businesses that provide a service. OK, so if I give you an example, um, if you look at the four topics on the right hand side, which are stakeholder map, product life cycle, profit maximization and price elasticity of demand. If you look at my businesses on the left hand side, I've got Zara, Google, John Lewis, Tesla and Apple. So I should be able to talk about those topics with one of those businesses. OK, I've only got five businesses here. I'd usually go for about seven, but um, I've tried to pick different ones in different industries. So let's start off with the topics. Let's go through the topics and see which business I would refer to. Stakeholder map, John Lewis. OK, we know the stakeholder map looks at interest and power. Usually in um, the stakeholder map, employees have high interest but low power. OK, but for John Lewis, where the employees have shares in the business, they have high interest and high power. So that gives me something to talk about with John Lewis. And I could go on about that depending on the question. If we look at product life cycle, I might look at Apple, for instance, because Apple has had the iPhone uh, in the product life cycle for a very, very long time without it going into decline as such. Uh, and Apple um, has actually done really well, even during the COVID pandemic. But really, I could really talk about if it was a question about extension strategies or the product life cycle. Um, I could then talk about Apple using extension strategies for its iPhone you know, making its camera better, for instance. Profit maximization, I could talk about Tesla. So Tesla is quite unusual as a business. So if I got an exam question, for instance, a 25 marker that said, um, profit maximization is always the most important thing for publicly traded companies. Well, actually, Tesla hasn't put profit maximization at the forefront. It's always put product quality at the forefront and trying to meet its customers needs. It's been quite groundbreaking in that because they believe if they do that, the profits will come. And actually, their shareholders have had to wait quite a while to see their shares really work for them uh, and really increase in value over time. So those, you know, initial investors have had to wait for a long time whilst Tesla has done, you know, created groundbreaking technology uh, in the automobile industry. Um, and therefore, profit maximization was not the first and foremost kind of thing on Tesla's mind, on Elon Musk's mind. OK, it was to create a really high quality product that could give all the petrol and diesel cars a run for its money and really gave value to the customer. And then they believe that the profit maximization would take care of itself. And they've really been through a tough time in making sure that the shareholders believe in those values that they do, that if you take care of the customer, the profit maximization will come. OK, so I can talk about profit maximization in terms of that. I can also talk about them in terms of stakeholder map, because, again, um, although shareholders have high interest and high power, they have really put their customers in uh, the kind of most important box on the stakeholder map and made them most important. They believe that the customers have the power to turn the fortunes of that business around. OK, price elasticity of demand. Again, I could talk about Apple, uh, be it creating products that are really inelastic because of their branding, uh, because of the status that goes with having their products. And I could talk about Zara that is in a very competitive market um, where price elasticity of demand, you know, products are elastic and they have to compete with the likes of H&M and Next, etc. Um, and so what I've done is I've taken a list of topics and I've tried to marry them up to the businesses that I know about. Now, you will come across certain topics that you think, I don't know how to relate it. And all you have to do is go to Google. So if I didn't know how to relate stakeholders 
with Zara, for instance, and I, or I didn't know how to relate it to any of those businesses, for instance, I could put in stakeholders and Zara and see what comes up or stakeholders and Tesla and see what comes up and learn about it that way. But what I'm doing is actively identifying the gaps in my knowledge where I can't talk about a business when it comes to certain topics in A-level business studies. So that is how you revise for it. Remember, you don't need to know about 20 businesses in detail. You need to know about six or seven from different industries selling products and services and be able to talk about them and link them to lots and lots of topics in A-level business studies. So that's how you revise for application in business studies. When you get given a case study, you make sure that you keep talking about that business. I want you to imagine or write even on your paper, so what, why is this relevant for this business? And think about whether the business is big, small, established, not established, trying to make its way, struggling financially or not, uh, struggling to create something new. Does it have a lot of competitors? Is it in a saturated market? So think about all of those things and make sure your answer is structured around those factors. In the non-case study element, make sure that you know six or seven businesses really well and go through your scheme of work and think about whether you can talk about one of those businesses in relation to every one of those topics. And if you can, then great. If you can't, you've got time to go and research it. Okay, I hope that helps. Um, and the next video will be about chains of argument and analysis and how you prepare for that.